Happy lunch hour, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming today uh, for the 12 o'clock session of Building Your ROI in Business Case. I'm Jenna Orini. Sorry about that. I won't do that again. Um, I head up product marketing here at Zoom. And with me, I have Stan uh, from Caesars and Alan White from A.O. Smith. And we are going to have a great time. I know it's ROI, right? It's data, it's quantitative, but that we're going to try to make this a lot of fun and interactive. Um, I'm going to let Alan maybe kick us off with what your journey has been with Zoom. Sure. Um, first of all, so happy to be here. It's one of the things that's been a pleasure is using Zoom. We went live in 2019. Uh, AO Smith's been around about 145 years. I've been around mm -hmm. AO Smith for about 19 of those. Um, we used um, a lot of different tools from uh, CenturyLink, audio and web, uh, GoToMeeting, and we had the adoption was a little bit painful. So uh, this year we went live with um, Zoom and uh, Zoom Phone for IT department, which is based in Nashville, Tennessee. And um, we've got about 31 Zoom rooms. We'll probably have about 35 by the end of the year, and our farthest one right now is in the Netherlands. Great, great, all right. all right. Stan, you want to tell us about Caesars? Yes, absolutely. Uh, my name is Stan Ivanoff. I'm with uh, Caesars Entertainment Corporation. Um, and up on the screen, uh, you'll see uh, there's just a, a past six month view of our Zoom usage. Uh, we've been a Zoom customer since the late uh, 2015. Uh, so a little bit over, uh, or just about four years now. And um, we operate Zoom uh, through the uh, major uh, uh, main six continents. Uh, we're in over 70 countries. Um, and our utilization of Zoom has uh, exponentially grown uh, with, with every new feature and release that they, um, uh, they, they come about on, on monthly basis or, or quarterly, et cetera. Uh, we have deployed around 60 Zoom rooms uh, throughout the enterprise. We have Zoom rooms in uh, Egypt and, and South Africa, in the UK. Uh, so a big presence in, in some of the uh, major countries. And most importantly, we have Zoom rooms throughout our enterprise here in the United States. Uh, we operate um, out of 36 states. We have over 50 properties. And uh, it is one of our main tools for collaboration and the way we keep our team connected throughout the, the vast distances. Great, so you're using meetings, you have a few rooms, right? Yes, so essentially um, we use uh, Zoom for uh, our webinars. Uh, we have a company-wide webinars that, that we do, uh, CEO and also uh, different departments that utilize webinar to connect with their teams. Um, Caesars is a very large organization. We have uh, over 67,000 employees. And as you can see on the screen, uh, just over the past six months, we've uh, racked up a little bit over 22 million minutes. Uh, <laughs> and we've connected with over 600,000 participants um, uh, worldwide. And out of those, uh, the most important figure for me, and, and one of the most impressive ones, is the uh, 144,000 participants and over that have enabled video. So that is something that they've utilized, uh, they've turned on their camera, they've connected through a conference room with a video, and, and truly enabled the presence uh, to connect with their team uh, more and more. And, and as you can see, we utilize a great um, uh, uh, meeting space in terms of the minutes that are used out of the Zoom rooms. So we have a little bit over a quarter million minutes accumulated over six months uh, that come out of the Zoom rooms, out of, out of conference spaces. Um, and we have smaller ones, we have uh, corporate boardrooms, we have uh, mid-sized meeting rooms. So uh, there is tremendous utilization when it comes to Zoom uh, within our organization. Great, I love it. And I love that we have such different companies on the panel here, right? I mean, you're doing entertainment and hospitality and gaming, and, and you guys are making water heaters. I mean, I, like, couldn't be more diverse, so thank you guys, I love it. Um, all right, so the next 40 minutes, we are going to kind of put a framework around this discussion. Uh, first talk about our hard savings and the ROI, the soft savings, talk about business improvements. And then none of this really makes sense unless you have great adoption. So maybe learn from these two on what were some great adoption trips, tips that they may have. 
So let's start with the quantitative, right? I mean, if you go in and you're looking at, I'm going to go to some of the new UC platform or meeting platform. How do you, as you know, a CIO, think about that? And what are some of the considerations that you're making? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so at the heart of, of, of all um, uh, video adoption or essentially if you're trying to make a business case for, for any sort of deployment, at the heart of it sits hard savings. It's what speaks to the CEO, it's what speaks to the CFO, to the entire executive leadership is how, how am I able to, to save some money, some dollars, uh, by deploying this new solution? So prior to us deploying Zoom, we had three different uh, platforms that were you know, that have enabled our video and conferencing needs. And what that meant for us as an IT organization, every time something went wrong, we would hear about it in three different ways. We would get three different support tickets. I would have to send three different engineers with three, three different skill sets to essentially solve the same problem. And not only that, but at the end of the month, uh, I would have to manage three different contracts and get three different invoices with signing three different checks. <laughs> so uh, fast, forward, fast forward to uh, Zoom deployment, we were able to consolidate and collapse to one solution, one platform with a consistent outcome. So now I'm actually able to enable my entire user base and, and end users to utilize the same functions, the same dashboard, the same uh, joining of the meeting. And from, a, uh, from an IT perspective, that is two less that I have to manage. Now, now I only worry about one platform uh, that provides uh, the utilization and the essence of, of our end users to, to meet in person or over the air. Uh, another aspect of the hard savings, and that is uh, something that you can easily calculate, is the reduction in travel cost. So the travel expenditure in itself is what will pay for the solution uh, in a very short period of time. And when it comes to travel reduction, for me, uh, that is in, in two categories. You have the physical aspect of it, which is you reduce the airfare, you reduce the lodging, the uh, Uber transportations, the time lost, the uh, meals. And the other aspect is the administrative cost. So what happens when you return back home? Now you have to snap a pic of your receipts, upload them. Uh, you got to compose this expenditure report, and then there is an executive or, or a financial analyst somewhere down the line that actually spends time looking and making sure that you comply with policy, et cetera. Um, so enabling video really reduces the amount of time that we spend on travel, and that is easily calculated. You can calculate that very easily. Um, and another aspect that, that for us was uh, extremely beneficial is we were able to reclaim a lot of our real estate. So we have over 150 departments in our organization. Each department had their own conference room, and there was a conference room between departments that they can meet. <laughs> and then you have the board conference rooms, and, and all of that uh, space that was previously utilized, now with the deployment of Zoom, we were able to put the end client at every video enabled point. So meetings today, they're spontaneous. Meetings today are not generally structured. Sometimes agendas are not even present. So it makes it very easy for users to simply pick up the phone or go to uh, the dashboard and click join now and connect with their team right away. And these were some of, uh, of, of our most uh, realized savings when it comes to the deployment of Zoom, something that you can easily calculate. Uh, it takes a few reports from uh, several areas, and that can be presented to the executive leadership team. Great. Alan, do you have something to add here? Full disclosure, I'm a nerd, so I want to get a little specific on some of the stuff to be able to try to sell this. Um, first of all, how many people currently have Zoom or you're here? Who has Zoom? Who's here just to try to see if there's a way to sell it because you're wanting to try to replace something else because Zoom is in tandem with something else? Okay. All right, so. I have a third one. Oh. Who's here because they're getting pressure to stay on something else that may be included free in a product or suite that you're using and you have to keep justifying Zoom? 
All right, we have a few of those too. All right, good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so some of this stuff is straightforward, right? You've got your normal PSTN charges. So what is your audio, video, web conferencing cost? That's pretty straightforward. One of the things you can do too um, is you can leverage Zoom, get an NDA signed, have them help you work on that. Everybody's got a job to do. This is probably one of the things that you do. So, you know, leverage your account team to help you look at that. But the, the bigger part is we've, we've all seen the, the iceberg diagram, right? So you're looking at this, but really everything is underneath the water and you kind of don't pay attention to that. So some of the things that we ran into is um, click shares. So I'm not sure if anybody knows what those are, but they're great little devices. You can get a CSE 200 for like 1300 bucks or so that will do a great job of casting to the television. That 1350 gets you an i7 computer. It gets you a tablet to be the controller. So that's your ROI. You want to make sure you have some of those things added. Uh, Shadow IT. This says a lot about Zoom. When we start getting talent, um, getting onboarded, Zoom is the only solution that we would have to hit our service desk where they said, hey, I'm new. I just joined marketing. I need my Zoom account. That's kind of cool, you know, because we had GoToMeeting. Nobody's, you know, sporting a Skype Rocks shirt, right? I mean, <laughs> so uh, let's see, some other things too. Let's say you're also looking at um, phone. So we've been using Zoom phone for IT department. It's been phenomenal. If you're looking at that, that iceberg gets a lot better. So, for example, in Nashville, Tennessee, we have one cable connection for SAP Internet. Well, that's our Zoom traffic. That's our Zoom voice traffic. We already had that with our network team, so really it's kind of a value add, so you pay attention to those things when you're trying to calculate. Uh, I think the only other part, too, and this is more if you are looking for that full UC experience, don't forget, too, when you're talking about Cisco, they love SmartNet. Avaya, I love Avaya, but they also love software assurance. So you start capturing all those things that are maintenance. And again, I know some of these. Some of these is talking with our, like our great account rep, uh, Jeremy's over here, um, and, and other people. So you don't do it alone. Leverage your talent where you have it, but think outside the box of what could be capturing. Uh, wear and tear, TNM, any of those costs that are related to anything telephony that could be counted toward your actual hard dollars. Yeah, I think related to that, and we hear it a lot from our customers, is the network and the infrastructure mm -hmm. that may be needed yeah. for something that may have a heavier bandwidth needs, right? right? And that's also another aspect um, uh, with the deployment of Zoom, we were able to, as mentioned, collapse our platforms into one. So we eliminated complexity. And complexity, not only uh, does it have benefit as a hard uh, savings and, and dollars to the bottom line, but comp when you eliminate complexity for the end user, that is a, a tremendous return that, that is, is difficult to calculate, and, and we're going to get into it in, in, a, in a couple of slides. Yeah. And one thing, too, um, and I think this, this bears a lot of importance, is the big elephant in the room is Zoom rooms, right? So it's easy to think about, I have audio, I have web, I have video conferencing. Well, how does that play with your, your conference rooms? That's a single solution. You know? So I think the Zoom rooms, also another part, too, when we had GoToMeeting, it was like pulling teeth with onboarding, offboarding, trying to deal with our licensing. You have great flexibility with Zoom to do like an active host model where you can guesstimate, and when you true up, it's gonna be a fair number. They make it so simple, and I think that's something you also need to think about when you think of ROI. Yeah, yeah. Um, Stan, you were talking a little bit about travel, mm -hmm. and I feel like something people said, like, right, we've already improved this, right? I've, I've been using GoToMeeting, I've been using Skype, you know, I already have video. So what is it different about Zoom that makes the travel more of a hard savings? Mm -hmm. So um, I would say one of the biggest uh, savers when it comes to travel is by utilizing Zoom, um, not only are we able to retain most and some of uh, some and most of your existing hardware, because Zoom operates in the cloud. Zoom is a, is a software provider. It's, it's hardware agnostic. Um, and being able to uh, essentially utilize that at different endpoints it reduces the physical aspect of, of travel. Um, another aspect of travel that is, that is reduced, as mentioned, really is around uh, the ability for the executives to either A, spend more time with family, or B, be able to connect with their team at a touch of a button. So even though video technology uh, enables us to do more, at the end of the day, it is utilized as a vehicle. 
video alone will not solve problems. However, video will enable you to be more productive, to be more efficient in conducting your meetings. You now don't have to spend uh, virtual data and you don't have to go back and forth with emails trying to understand each other. You can simply jump on the call, jump on the video, uh, video enabled call, and actually speak to your team. You can connect to your team. And one aspect that, that I want to be uh, clear on is video will not or has not replaced in-person meetings, right? We're, we're getting close, and in the future with holograms and the Star <laughs> Trek and you know, everybody just pops along the, <laughs> the table uh, when that's coming, that will still be true. But at the, at the end of the day, uh, video is there for the in-between instances of your one-to-one -one meetings, of your in-person meetings. Because yeah. we're, we're all very well aware of you walk into a room and it's like, whoa, <laughs> what did I get myself into, right? And that's something, it's, it's the energy that, that, that video can convey. But for any time in between that, it's what you want to use video for. Yeah, and I think your video adoption rate is really showing that. And you know, when people switch to Zoom, kind of our overall stat is 85% increase in video usage. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, it gets back to changing how people really work with right. that. So yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so a little Albert Einstein, because we all are nerds here, right? <laughs> In the ROI session. Yeah. So we talked about like things that can be counted, but not everything that counts can be counted, right? So let's talk about the soft savings a little bit. Alan, you want to kick us off on this one? Sure, and I want to get some opinions from anyone here. Um, so increase in collaboration and communication, but a decrease in complexity. How do you put a value on that? Because that's what's tough. The hard savings, that's pretty straightforward, but Time to market. Yeah. Can you repeat that, please? Internal customer SAT scores and retention. Yeah. Yeah, so he was saying internal customer SAT scores and retention, time to market. Yeah. Some of them good those stuff. are all good. Yep. And uh, one of these, and I heard the term. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, less time training users on how to use the system. Yeah, so less time training users. Yep. Yep. Anybody else? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the availability, and that's it, right? If you got ease of use and it just works, and they don't just say that around here, you know, <laughs> that gets confidence. When you we have do say that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, once you have that confidence, that changes the mentality of everything on being able to have a work-from-home policy, being able to feel more confident to have, you know, interviews-based. So that's one thing that we do a lot of is those video-based interview saves the uh, potential candidate time it saves our our executive folks a lot of time so that's that all translates into it uh, the meeting tax and I thought this was a great term that that you dropped which was how many people are on a we won't pick on Skype so pick a solution and you're ready to join that call you join early it's four minutes somebody's still fumbling because there's an audio issue or somebody can hear, but they can. I see a couple of people nodding, but uh, you know that's aggravating. What is that time worth when you've got nine people on that call, right? Um, and I know that that's been reduced significantly with Zoom. You know, and here's the other thing too. How do you put a value on walking into a conference room? You're busy. You've only got 30 minutes to get your point across. You walk in and you press a start button, and it just works. It's one of my favorite things. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. Push that button. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. yeah. Um, and and as you, uh, Alan, as you alluded to it, uh, essentially for me, soft savings are hard savings that are either a subjective or you can't calculate them, or or near impossible to calculate. Yeah. Right. Uh, and and the best example of that is time. Another great example of that is team collaboration. So how do we improve the team collaboration, and and how do we measure that? Uh, when we use Zoom. And a couple, of, a couple of points to speak to are we get to make decisions faster, more sound decisions, and better informed decisions when, we, when we're able to connect via video. Uh, because we're able to not only see what everyone uh, in the room looks like, we're able to connect at a level that you simply cannot do that via email, uh, text, or phone call. It's that video presence that allows us to understand where that person comes from. It's that video presence that allows us to see 
the person's body language and understand, okay, I, I, I do see your argument and I can actually fill your shoes. So it uh, really allows our executives and decision makers to get to those decisions faster and, and to save time. Uh, another aspect of, of the soft ROI or savings would be uh, training and development, as Alan also mentioned, uh, in, in a way that we now spend less time training our team members. Um, so for instance, in, in our world, if we deploy a new game on the casino floor, if we deploy a new product uh, uh, throughout the properties, or even for IT, a new, a new, a new machine, a new printer, etc., we're able to record what we do, how we service, and how we manage that product. And that recording is available in our content library, and then anyone that comes onto that team, they can simply go take a look at it, and without any or little direction, they can follow the process step by step. And that to us reduces time for the facilitator. It reduces time that, that it takes for us to train our end users and to train our technicians on how to help the organization better. And it overall increases the productivity and most importantly morale of the uh, employees. And another aspect is uh, relationships. And in life, in business, it's very tough to navigate the waters if you do not build and curate your relationships. Your relationships with your boss, with other departments, with, with your team, et cetera. And, and having video enabled capabilities is what strengthens those relationships. It what allows you to go into a deeper level and understand who is sitting across from you and what their hardships or, or what is the obstacle they're trying to overcome. I love that. It just makes us all more human, right? It does, <laughs> it does. It's great. All right, so which brings us to really, it's, you know, there's more to that, right? It's building the authentic relationships with the people um, of that. This is a quote from the CEO of Hootsuite, uh, Ryan Holmes, about building that successful band isn't just about that ROI, right? It is about all these other things as well. Um, and you started talking about training, so I think this is a great segue into business improvements, right? So think about the different use cases and the way Zoom is used in your organizations and um, what sort of business improvements have you seen? Because I think CIOs everywhere, you guys are so much more involved in that C-suite decision, right? Of how do I really drive the business? What are business outcomes I can drive? So. Right. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I'll continue on. So as, as for, uh, some of the, the most important business improvements for us um, have been around uh, business process. So something that previously was uh, textual, something that previously uh, was uh, in, uh, in a written note and somebody had to sit there and flip through pages, it is now um, uh, easier to consume via video. And, and that stays true as, you know, there's been plenty of research uh, behind it to where 80% uh, of communication is nonverbal. So when you sit and, and you try to read through a manual that's, that's 400 pages, I mean, just picking up that, that stack is, is daunting. <laughs> that's a daunting task. Um, but users, our users have been, have been more uh, acceptive when we say, well, here's a five minute video on how you can do this. And here's a five minute video or five to seven min vin uh, minute video on this problem that, that you've just come about instead of pointing them to an SOP site or a document library site that they have to sift and search and, and control F on their keyboard all the time to try and find some sort of a keyword document. Um, so enabling video really uh, helped us improve our processes when it came to uh, training. And, and we saw that that's something that we're able to measure with the reduction in tickets because our technicians uh, absorbed the information better and they retained it. Uh, much better than they did uh, through reading. Um, another aspect that we're able to improve by enabling Zoom for our organization is uh, the collaboration between teams. So previously we would have uh, to schedule meetings, we would have to move meetings around and, and push deadlines around because there was a conflict. And enabling video uh, and as, through Zoom, enabled, uh, provided for us to remove the physical barriers and the logistics of scheduling a meeting. And with their uh, releases and, and now uh, one of the great features that we take uh, a lot of use of is the virtual background. 
because previously our, our end users that were uncomfortable joining a video because you know you, you see the top of their car, you see their, their room, you see <laughs> you see you see what they look like uh, as far as it, or what state they are at, you know during driving, etc. But now with the virtual background, that's that's no problem. That barrier has been removed, much like the barrier that took so long for someone to read something and then retain it. That has been removed as well. Yeah, it definitely turns them on video more. So. Mm -hmm. Did you like those announcements of the product keynote? Yes. With virtual backgrounds? <laughs> a, lot, a lot of improvements exactly. there, which it's are based. exciting. <laughs> Alan, why don't you talk about usage in your organization? I think the biggest improvement, he's already hit on it, but that's, uh, you get the increased collaboration, but I think the biggie is the building or further building of relationships. So I've got a direct report that works in Johnson City, Tennessee. It's not really next door. Um, I've got an associate that works with us out of uh, South Dakota and I have another person that bounces in different locations here in Middle Tennessee. So having that staff meeting every day, and it's, it's very close to what we're doing here. Uh, you know, and, and he hit on body language, and that's a biggie too, especially when you're in IT and you've got a commitment to do something that evening, and you can see that look. You don't get it on a conference call, but it's like, you know what, I don't think you're 100% sure you're gonna be successful tonight. So you can actually reevaluate, and that body language comes through, sometimes it's positive, but sometimes it's negative, but you don't get that on a call. And we'll get into probably this in the next little bit, but I think that's a, that's a biggie of having that top-down strategy where leadership pushes video because you still have that case in point and I'm sure everybody here can raise their hand on this one but you have people that's like eh, I'm just gonna leave it off but if you get that buy-in from leadership they expect you to do it you know you have more productive meetings that means you're probably gonna save time and you can get on to the next thing great so you talk about using this in training are you guys using this in hiring or interviewing or in sales or maybe even on your manufacturing line of with support anything along those lines yeah, actually, uh, I was just about to mention it's something that we're tinkering with right now in terms of um, utilizing video for our HR department and how do we cut the time that it takes for us to find the right candidate. How are we able to solve the candidate's problem of, I did not find a uh, babysitter, I, I, I have to reschedule the interview, or I'm stuck in traffic, I can't make it. So it's something that we're working with. Uh, how can we streamline the hiring process and find that top candidate, find the, the pool and really look for what is it gonna take for us to get to them quicker? Oh, and by the way, if you enable video and now we can record it, we're able to present that video to more decision makers. Instead of that candidate having to do second and third and fourth interview, we can present that recording to several decision makers within the department and they can make a decision right there and then. Uh, so not only does that help our HR department, but it also helps the candidates and the pool of candidates that, that come into play. And with the emergence and the immersion of uh, the millennial generation, they are connected to video. Most of their communication is video. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you've seen it. Sometimes they just have the phone on and it's not even pointing at their face. It's just sitting on the desk or looking at the ceilings and they're just having the conversation. But it's, it's that ability to take the phone at any second and show face. That's what's important. Something to add to that too is, you know, it's not like it was even five years ago where you would have new talent being on board, especially younger folks, where it, it would be nice to have. We're expected to offer that stuff. You know, so that's a, I think that's a difference um, where we are now and probably just a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It, it, it definitely speaks to talent retention and employee retention uh, and enabling them to, to be happy. Yeah, I yes, have sir. a great stat. I think it's, yeah, so 91% of um, employees say that uh, tech influences their job choices. Yeah, I know, but do you guys have On your stats. The only thing I can really somewhat quantify is that we get those requests where we haven't in the past. So I can't say that, that one way specific or another just based on requests. Right. Yeah, yeah I just have the public stats here. It's 91% to say that tech influences are job choices and 80% um, want to work with more cutting edge technologies mm -hmm. overall yeah. on that. 
Great. So this all comes down to can you get them to use it, right? So you know, I'm a mom too. So motivation is the art of getting people to do what they want to do, right? Making them do that. Um, so what are some of your adoption best practices? I think um, I made a cheat sheet here just to make sure I wouldn't miss anything. Um, and I have a couple of your slides too we can show. Okay, slides. okay, sure. Um, I, I think one biggie is if we did it ourselves, it would be quicker, but it may not be the best way. Um, when you add another department or another layer of bureaucracy or whatever you want to call it, you move a little slower, you have more meetings, people have different opinions than yours, sometimes they're right. And um, short version, align yourself with HR or their uh, communications team. Because one of the things, if you can get on the same page with them and make this more of a outside of an IT type push, you'll be way more successful. So some of the things we're able to do, now we didn't do this piece, but if we were aligned on this whole real estate topic as far as what do new cubicles need to look like if there's a more aggressive work from home? Gets into retention and some other things, right? But that's big. You need alignment with HR for that, most likely. Corporate communications to get stuff on your internet, email blasts, um, required training for, through uh, your uh, learning management system, having that so when someone's onboarded, you know that first week, they know how to use Zoom, they know that they need to have video first, those types of things. That's, you know, in the other part too, continuous improvement. So there are some things that we did well, there are some things that we could do better, but you know, reevaluate every quarter. Lean on your uh, Zoom team to, to help you out, but really find those efficiencies and, and drive those home. Um, I've got plenty here, but uh, I think in the, for time here, I'll be nice. But um, <laughs> the last one, which I think is important, and we have yet to do our first one, even though we've had a very successful rollout, strategic lunch and learn. So tackle marketing, tackle sales, find some opportunities to where you know you can see that that PSTN versus VoIP adoption isn't really there. And uh, you know, you, no one says no to uh, donuts or uh, some great barbecue, <laughs> right? So get in there, and maybe even somebody from Zoom is going to come out there and help you out and give you some swag. So there, there's a lot of great ways to get that, you know, to to keep it fresh and keep it renewed and, and keep growing. Great, I love it. Can we sit and pick at your slides sure. a little bit too? <laughs> Picture a baby, come on. <laughs> yeah, so um, you know, this gets the, the brand across and um, you know, this probably just edges out puppies and kittens, right? <laughs> But, um, and the other thing too, you talk about you know, adoption. So having that same message, right? It's like, well, I need to reinstall my Outlook plugin. Where do I go at Zoom? Don't, go to aosmith.zoom.us. Well, what about this? Go here, I need live training, go here. So then now your first level support can probably 80% of these requests, just send them here. Great, I love it. And then you also have, is this your intranet site? Yeah, and this, this goes back to being aligned with uh, corporate communications. So. Um, I can't take responsibility for all this, but Deanna, who works very hard for me, um, she worked on um, a lot of articles. Then we make sure those are aligned and have that same message that corporate communications wants. And then every couple of weeks, we roll out something fresh and it's best practices, you name it. And then, uh, you know, you just keep that front and foremost and don't let it get stale. And that's a great way just to show new features that are coming out, right? I mean, it's something new that you're deploying whether that's going to be the video virtual backgrounds, something, the live transcripts, who knows what might be coming that you want to make sure people know about. That's a great way to do that. Yeah, that's how we introduce, hey, you know, we've got conference rooms. Now we have Zoom rooms. What is a Zoom room? Where, where are they? Who's getting one next? You know, those kinds of things as we, we try to keep in front of everybody. Right. Dan, what about you? Yeah, uh, I mean, I would have to say, you know, one of the benefits for working a large organization, it's, uh, it's resources. And as, as Alan alluded to, it's, it's generally video adoption for us has been a top-down approach. Uh, and, and honestly, uh, you know, Michael Jackson said it best, uh, start with the man in the mirror. And, and that's something that I make sure to, to, to do every time I get a chance is to enable video uh, as, as I meet with my team and as I meet with, with other colleagues. Now, the top-down approach, what that means is you have to get someone from the executive suite involved. Uh, if you can get to the C-listers, even better. The more, the merrier. Because as they enable their video, it's a few too many impact. Sure, you can do it from the bottom up, but that's gonna require many too few, right? So in a way, if my entire team used video, I'd feel awkward not to put it on, 
right? But it would take the entire team. But if we approach it from top down, if my CEO uses video and my CIO uses video, well, if, if he or she has it on, uh, I better have a compelling reason for not having it on. <laughs> um, and something that we must remember, um, <clears throat> enabling video for the organization is not a technical challenge. That's not a tech problem. That's the easy part. That's a cultural shift. So this is where partnering with your departments that know your organization, departments such as HR, communications, internal marketing, those are the areas that their day-to-day -day activity is to be embedded in your organization, is to understand what the culture is like. So for me, adoption of Zoom through our uh, organization has been one of the most fun activities because I got to learn so much about the people that I work with and about the people that I serve, simply through engaging with the HR department and the communications team department and saying, hey, I need to know more about my users. Uh, and, and believe it or not, one of the, the, the most obvious thing was they just didn't know about it. They just didn't know that, that Zoom existed or that Zoom has these capabilities. So what we did is we were able to make it part of our onboarding process and make it fun and exciting and say, hey, as you receive your pamphlet, you know, check out this, check out this dashboard. And here's what it can do for you. Here's all the cool stats. And, and people love stats, I love stats, uh, but and, I mean, I'm nerdy too, like Alan, <laughs> uh, working IT, but, but to me, stats is something that, that I'm a very uh, data-driven person. Data to me speaks, and it's data that I can take a look at, define, measure, and institute change. And without data, it's difficult to do that. Um, so when it comes to adoption practices, partner with your departments that understand your organization because, because it's a cultural change. The technology, Zoom has figured it out. That's easy. It just works. You, you push it on, you have an internet connection, voila, you're connected. Um, so work with the departments, make sure they know where your users are, and then take a look at what the user's challenges are. Are they not using video because they don't have a camera? Okay, then that's a problem that you can solve. Are they not using video because they're, they're uncomfortable? Well, that is where the team helps. Because most often than not, people are uncomfortable, not because they're uncomfortable individually, they're uncomfortable of how would they appear to someone else. And by enabling video, by partnering with the departments, you're able to understand your organization and really hit on those points and see where you need to make a change for a better adoption. Great. And you're both using Microsoft Teams, right? Yes. So how do you make that justification, right? Of if I'm already paying for something that's bundled in, how do I go about f finding a best of breed or finding something like Zoom? Yeah. Well, well, for us, um, Teams is focused more on, on collaboration. Teams is a aspect that, that you're able to do uh, project management, you're able to do resource management, uh, you're able to do and work on different documents and hey, check out my latest update or take a look at this. Zoom for us is building that relationship that's required for that team to work efficiently. It's utilizing Zoom in a, in a way that you're able to see your partners, you're able to see your business constituents, you're able to see your teams and your, and your uh, employees. And by enabling video, now you're able to actually enable the work in teams to be more efficient, to be faster, and to be more accurate. So again, video for us is a vehicle. It, video alone is not gonna sell, uh, solve your business problems or it's gonna execute your strategy quicker, but it will enable you to do so. And adoption is key in making sure that you take uh, advantage of that. That was the probably billion dollar question because I think if you're Slack, if you're Box, if you're you know, fill in the blank and it's like the, yeah. the executive well, but this is included, and it doesn't matter if it's best of breed, it's we already have this, so why don't we just use it? That's where you have to kind of pay attention to, you know, some of the things we're talking about, because, you know, the other part, too, you know, I meant that seriously. Who, who's sporting a, you know, a Skype rules shirt? I don't see that, but you get it. You're going to get Teams if you have Office 365. You have WarePoint, excuse me, SharePoint. It's nice, okay, but is that the best out there? 
right? So you have to be ready to fight for this stuff. And that's why if you're engaged, you do a continuous improvement, really working with the business, it's not going to be just Stan or Alan really trying to fight to keep a solution that really is empowering users. The users are also going to be just as on board with the solution. You know? Right. All right, we have about five more minutes here. So I'm going to quickly run through. This is, I saw a lot of you with phones out. So if you want to take photos, these are quick summary slides of kind of the key takeaways, right? Um, so the hard, hard savings, right? We talked a lot about what's that iceberg, Alan, you were talking about that, right? And consolidating what, what you currently have in your stack that may help um, someone that's hard to arrive. We talked quite a bit about business travel um, and also real estate savings mm -hmm. with that as well. On your soft saving tips, I just love all these phones coming up. Uh, so let's see, we talked about increasing video usage, right? And decreasing that complexity. Uh, looking at your employee happiness, right? Doing a CSAT survey, uh, seeing what, how they actually like the products that they are using. Um, looking at the mobile usage, right? Availability, uh, being flexible, uh, the, that meeting tax, <laughs> the old meeting tax. Uh, and also your quality of service, also really important to look at. Your business improvements. What are your five observations here, or top five? I, you know, I really do love to say it with a smile, not a phone call, right? It's really about building, building that culture. And that may be for internal or external meetings. It's really about making a more agile organization here. Um, it could be for training. It could be using it in sales and improving your reach there. Um, more engaging interviews. Uh, and also just that cultural shift. Yep. And then adoption, some of your top tips here where, hey, let's get it top down, right? Let's get it from the leadership. Let's get them on board and using it. Um, and then you'll get adoption across your organization. Partnering with HR, uh, really in your corporate comms team, like the internet site, I love seeing that. Um, reporting and data and dashboards, right? If you have, can have the data to help justify what the usage is and seeing how people are using it, that certainly helps. Um, lunch and learns. Take advantage of Zoom's training. We have a great uh, CSM team and PSO teams that can come out and help. Um, and also just making it part of your learning management system and having those quick video tips and tricks on how right. to do that. Great. A few minutes for questions. If anybody would like to come up to the mics. A couple here. Wrong way, sir. <laughs> I'll add one more. Oh, great. So you guys talk about a lot about like soft, soft savings uh, improvement, and they talk about the video give you enable relationship, um, you know, loyalty, whatever. So we have so many different video conference system solutions. What make you think Zoom is special? That's my question. Thank you. I'll take a stab at that. Um, so. For us, what, 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 essentially you're asking why, why did we choose Zoom, yeah. right, over anything else? Because you have, have BlueJeans, you have right. Cisco, and you have Polycom. Mm -hmm. Why Zoom is so special? So right. that's, that's the question. So uh, one, of the, one of the key aspects is uh, Zoom's vision and, and, and uh, the, the model that they uh, make customers happy. Uh, it aligns with, with our vision and our model. Um, and, but the, the most important aspect and, and the biggest decision uh, factor would be the ease of use. Because Zoom focuses on just making it work through their software delivery. So I don't, I'm not forced to change my existing hardware at my conference rooms. Or I'm not forced to change the existing hardware at the endpoints. Because all of that goes into the cloud and magically happens and it gets delivered. So, Utilizing Zoom enables me and, and, and our organization to retain most of the current infrastructure and without, have, without having to, to upgrade the infrastructure that's allowed to, to run a, such a smooth uh, collaboration and, and video enabled I'd have to platform. say the ease of use being the biggest driver. Yeah. Yeah, please. So did you guys have a like matrix to the TCO comparison between like Cisco Polycom, which is like on-premise video conference solution versus Zoom, and Zoom versus other cloud-based solutions like uh, BlueJeans? Do you have that, those matrix? Uh, you can certainly work with your sales team 
to go through that. I think I think there's okay. so much that is individual on how what your current environment is that I think it's 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 hard to kind of do that as a generic on on the overall market. But yes, we do work with them. So at AO Smith, I sold you guys your first WebEx licenses years and years ago. Um, one of the biggest challenges we had there, which is what I'm also trying to, to figure out, I have a lot of companies in the Midwest for manufacturing, is, and we, I remember executives really fought those things a lot, and they really, we had to work a lot for ROI. But that is, that is the, the question that I have is, I face a lot of executives who video isn't natural for them, and trying to give them the hard, like, you know, we're a manufacturing company running on smaller margins. We're not some tech company in California. How do we justify spend, you know, bringing in new spend? And so that's why I was asking that question earlier. Has that, you know, do you guys have things now that you report statistics that you report up, uh, key things or metrics or whatnot? How did you transform them from being skeptics to now it seems like you guys have a ton of support? Well, one thing is you don't want to try to oversell. So in our case with GoToMeeting, my opinion, my experience, I'm speaking for me. Um, VoIP was anywhere between good and excellent. You know, uh, Zoom is pretty much excellent. It's going to let that video suffer well before the audio gets interrupted. And I think that's the secret sauce. I think Eric could talk all this great stuff about Zoom, but if you didn't have that foundation and that secret sauce that they have baked in here, we wouldn't be here. You know, so you get to talk about true VoIP adoption as an ROI, a big one. When you look at those audio minutes, when you're dealing with, in our case, China, India, yeah, you China name it. Huge. Yeah, so, so that was easy for us, you know. So I think we, we looked at what if we got 20% VoIP adoption. My cat could get that, right? So you just have to kind of think, what, what can I really sell knowing that, you know, we're IT, right? You, you knock it out, you're on to the next thing. So it's like when I was talking about those strategic lunch and learns, that's do as I say, not as I do. We have yet to have our first one. We need to. It's been a successful year, but it'd be way better if we could get focused and get some stuff off your back where you can do that continuous improvement, you know. And, and just to, to add to that also, another aspect is if you partner with your HR department, they will give you the stats of, here's what our potential employees are telling us in talent. They want video, That's true. and they, they, they want the capability. They want the single touch, I'm connected, and now everyone is online type of aspect. They don't want to be bothered with, okay, well, you know, what's the meeting ID, or you know, do I need to click on this? Right, well, yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. All right, I think we have time for one more question. Um, so you're talking about uh, integrations that are like banked in with like teams and all that kind of stuff. We use G Suite at my uh, workplace and um, I think most of the devices are proprietary, um, but I'm just wondering um, if there's any integration for like Asus um, devices or if I could like wipe and integrate with the existing hardware. Sorry, it's really technical. Mm, but. I think you'll probably find the right person to get that answer. I'm not. I know that you know we've had a lot, a lot of luck with, luck with uh, Poly, Logitech, and some others. So I'm not too familiar with it. I'm trying to reuse that. So you're using Google on the Asus? Yes. Is that what you're doing? Um, you know what I'm going to do is direct you up to Mission Control, <laughs> uh, where we have all of our technical experts who can make sure through your models and what you have that you would be able to connect that with the Zoom. But usually we're, we're pretty good on all that. So, all right. Thank you all. Um, hope you enjoy lunch. There is food thank upstairs. You. Thank and you. thank you, Alan and Stan. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Thanks. Thanks.